Hello and welcome to a kind of a special edition of Gold Goats and Guns. I'm just going to do a short, quick thing here. It's Monday, July 23rd, 2018. I've noticed some stuff happening in the markets today that I thought was kind of odd and wanted to drop in a quick four or five minute note to see, to tell you what I think I'm seeing. Um, if you remember back in March, in May, sorry, April, May, uh, we had a situation in the U.S. Treasury market where the yields on the long end of the yield curve, the U.S. yield curve, blew out. And they blew out beyond a t kind of technical resistance, which I'll show in a minute. And we didn't know what it was at the time. And it turns out that it was the Russians dumping 90% of their uh, U.S. Treasury reserves on the open market over a six-week period uh, from starting in early April through uh, middle of May five or six week period mostly i think in response to the threatened sanctions against rusal which uh the russian state aluminum company which caused a tremendous amount of dislocation all across the markets and eventually the russians just finally said okay that's enough uh if this is the way the americans are going to act then we're just going to divest ourselves completely of u.s assets now the trade war with china is getting pretty hot uh neither side is backing down china has made it abundantly clear that they consider this, um, they consider the Trump's protection tariffs to be unnecessary. David Stockman makes the very important point that global tariffs today are n nothing on average than they were where they were, say, 30 years ago. And yes, uh, tariffs on our goods in certain places are higher than others, but at the same time, you know, we export their, our debt all around the world. And that's part of the what I'm seeing in the, the markets today is that, that debt exportation that we run a budget deficit, print treasury bonds, sell treasury bonds into the market, and then in, in order to cover that budget deficit, and part of our trade imbalance is that we send debt overseas. And we get goods back. We get goods back, and we send, send money out, right? And Trump's or our arguments about us getting killed on trade um, betrays a kind of 17th century, or as Stockman put it, a 17th century mentality on trade. And I happen to agree with David. Um, and so it's part of the problem here is that the real issue is that in order to rebalance the scales, the, Trump's first instincts were correct. Start cutting the, uh, the regulations, start making American labor more um, uh, productive and more uh, competitive by lowering input costs locally, lowering the corporate tax rate, lowering the, uh, the, the personal income tax rate for the majority of Americans and get that portion of the economy more competitive with the rest of the world. That's one. Okay. So now we have, that was the first thing he did and that was the right thing to do. And it's still the right thing to do. And, you know, an arco libertarian here, he should keep going. I mean, that's, you know, that's like 10, 20,000 lawyers at the bottom of the ocean. It's a damn good start, but you know, what have you done for me since April? All right. So that being said, you know, I've been handicapping strong dollar, strong gold, strong U.S. treasuries, and, and strong U.S. stocks in the short term while everything falls apart. Well, everything hasn't started to fall apart yet, hasn't fallen apart yet, but it's beginning to. We're starting to see, I mean, the, the stock market continues to levitate uh, uh, while everybody, defi while they, they feel like it defies gravity. The, um, we've had a rally in U.S. treasuries over the last couple of weeks, uh, and China is devaluing the yuan very aggressively um, while supporting its corporate, while buying corporate paper in the open market and supporting the, the corporate bond market, which is what they're supposed to be doing. Martin Armstrong's got a great blog on this uh, up on his website this morning. I'll put a link in the, the description down below of the video, uh, how, it, how they're going to handle, how they're handling their wave of defaults and how we handled our wave of defaults back in 2008. So, uh, let's put up the chart of what I'm seeing this afternoon because today or is very interesting because what we've been seeing is a tightening of the U.S. yield curve. And I'm going to just show this real quick. This is investing.com. Look over to the right-hand side of your screen where the cursor is doing its thing. What's important here is the difference between the two and the 10. This is the two-year bond. This is the yield. And this is the 10-year bond. Now, today, they're all off really strongly, but I'm going to show you something. Stock markets aren't really doing very much. Gold is off strong. That doesn't make any sense. The gold is off. Yeah, so all the safe haven assets are off. Gold is off. 
and bonds are being sold. Rising yields means lower bond prices. So it's this widening of the yield curve, though, that sh is interesting because when the markets, when the hedge fund managers and the, and the, and, and the risk um, layers, the guys laying off risk by buying treasuries against their, say, their stock positions, um, they're usually buying the short end of the curve. They don't want to be trapped long. The central banks are mostly long. So when you're seeing this, this is exactly what we were seeing back in April when the Russians were dropping the market. And I'm going to show you what I'm, what I'm talking about with, and what to look for for on Thursday in just a minute. I've got another slide I want to show you. So this is very interesting. Notice also at the same time, this is Italian. I've also got Italian five-year bond yields up here. And I want you to take a particular um, close look at this because this is all the election um, craziness after the, the populists took over. And then the ECB kind of got everything under control. And notice how this is just kind of just like biding its time. We got really strong support here down about a, a point and a half. And then look at yes, last week's high was 1.73. And here we are today. And we violated last week's high today, but we didn't actually close above it. The Italian bond market is setting up for another wave of, expo of explosion higher. And I think it has as much to do with a, and give me just a second for this to actually show up. Come on today there we are um the uh the chinese yuan breaking out to the upside look at this chart this is crazy town euro is off today as well note look at this this is the chinese rapidly and aggressively trying to deal with their uh corporate the the wave of corporate uh bond defaults that are starting to hit their economy as the dollar strengthens. Notice the dollar's up about 94 and a half. Uh, it was trading at around 89, 88 earlier in the year. So when you put all this together, right, and give me just a second, get back to where I need to. We'll go back to me while I prep everything else. So when you put all that together, I want you to look at, this is a very important chart that I, I, I've been building for years and I continue to build it. Uh, I'll go back to my desktop in just a second. Make it big enough, and then we'll go over here. All right, come on. All right, uh, desktop, go. There we go. All right, so this is U.S. Treasuries held in trust at the Fed by foreign central banks. Now, remember, most of the foreign central banks are on the long invested at the long end of the yield curve meaning they own like fives and sevens and tens and thirties they don't own six month paper they don't own three month t-bills they don't own one year paper they own some but they don't own a lot 90 percent of uh, of foreign central bank ownership is in the long end of the yield curve including china's and china owns maybe a hundred billion dollars worth of short-term debt but they own 1.818 trillion dollars worth of u.s treasury bonds so this is what happened when the Russians dumped their treasuries in April and May. You can see that big arrow there. This downtrend here, this, this short downtrend, this was this short, sharp downtrend was the Russians, right? They held, they owned a bunch of these treasury bonds. They held them in reserve at the Fed, or, you know, uh, locally here in the United States in order to be able to sell them quickly into the marketplace. They're not sitting, you know, in a Russian account and then have to be moved and then cleared through Euroclear or whatever. They could leave them here in the United States in order to move them quickly. And they did. They dumped them almost immediately. And then since then, uh, it's been a kind of a weak upturn, but it's not really moving anywhere. The question I have for today, and this is the thesis of the, the, uh, of, of the entire video, is, is this a prelude for another drop? Is this, and we're going to know by Thursday, because this, this comes from the Fed's 8.4.1 report, which they publish every Thursday after the market closes. So we'll know by Thursday whether China has begun dumping treasuries in order to raise dollars uh, in the market. And that's what I'm seeing in the widening of the U.S. yield curve. If that's the case, we'll see a short drop here, a sharp drop here of you know, 10, 15, 20 billion dollars, especially if this widening continues for the rest of the week. Okay, so that's what I want you to look for on Thursday. Not that, you know, you know, I'm not one of like 40 people that downloads the H.4.1 report and then plays around with it every week. But there you go. This is what I'm interested in here. This could be very interesting. So, uh, going desk, going thing, and here. So that's what I wanted to throw at you today. Uh, we're well past the four-minute mark, so I should probably go. 
Uh, we'll be on at 8 o'clock tonight as normal, and then we'll be on with Jeff Rents and Rents Radio at 10 p.m. tonight. You guys take care. You have a great afternoon, and do me a favor. Keep your stick on the ice.